Hello, and welcome to this lesson on machine learning. Today, we'll be looking closely at how machine learning will revolutionize the future of work and why it is important for people managers to have a strong grasp of data analytics. We will have three lessons this week. In this first introductory lesson, we'll define machine learning and get a sense of how it can be used to improve decision making and prediction. Next is a podcast where I invite a leading expert in HR to discuss the implications of machine learning for human resource management. Finally, I'll show you how machine learning works in practice by building an artificial neural network. Ready? All right, let's begin. What is machine learning? Good question. Let's start with the basics. Machine learning refers to the use of computers to analyze data and identify patterns on a scale that would be impossible for a person. With the right programming and software, computers today can analyze huge, just massive chunks of data, primarily with the aim of predicting an outcome based on a set of known variables. What makes machine learning unique is that the statistical model can actually learn in a manner similar to how human beings learn. As long as you keep pumping new data into the statistical model over time, it will become better and even better at predicting whatever outcome it is that you're interested in. In a way, the model becomes smarter or more intelligent, if you will. Machine learning is also commonly referred to as data mining, predictive analytics, and artificial intelligence, or AI. What do you mean by predicting an outcome? So machine learning focuses on predicting outcomes. An outcome, also referred to as a dependent variable, is anything that we would like to predict. For example, a nonprofit organization might be interested in predicting how much a given person might donate to their cause. A marketing company might want to develop a consumer profile to predict what kind of person is most likely to purchase a product. An employer or HR manager might want to develop an employee selection system that's able to predict for example, which job applicant is likely to be the most productive if hired. A clinical psychologist might want to predict which patients are mo most at risk of suicide. Obviously, when predicting these outcomes, the more accurate your model, the better. What kind of information is needed to predict an outcome? Okay, so in order to predict an outcome, you need to have data, obviously. The data must consist of explanatory factors, also referred to as independent variables, and an outcome or set of outcomes, also referred to as dependent variables. So let's use the example of the HR manager wanting to use machine learning to predict say, job performance among a set of job applicants. If the HR manager already has data about current employees, then he or she can use those data to build a model. The outcome might be, let's say, a quantitative measure of job performance from the performance appraisal system. Some current employees score very highly on it and others score quite low uh, because they're not so good at their jobs. Now, if the HR manager also has some data on traits or characteristics of these individuals, then he or she can use that information to predict job performance. So for example, let's assume that the HR manager has data on IQ scores, maybe some quantitative measures of conscientiousness and the number of years of work experience per employee. These three measures are called explanatory factors or independent variables. 
the HR manager can then look at how well IQ, conscientiousness and work experience predict job performance among current employees and then use those same explanatory factors on job applicants to predict how they would likely score on employee performance, the key outcome of interest. That sounds cool. Can only a mathematical genius do predictive modeling? No, well, lucky for us mere mortals, there are computer programs that will do most of the heavy lifting for us. These computer programs have built-in algorithms that will do the calculations and give you your predictions. One of the most common algorithms used is the artificial neural network or the ANN for short. An artificial neural network, what's that? Well, I'm so glad you asked. An artificial neural network is a statistical model that is based on the architecture of the human brain. You see, your brain consists of billions upon billions of neurons. You are capable of learning because of chemical signals that pass from one neuron to another through synapses that are connected by what are called axons and dendrites. So the dendrite receives information or input and the axons pass on that information or the output. So data scientists have captured this biological process within what we call an artificial neural network. You see, in an artificial neural network, you have a set of input variables, also referred to as independent variables or explanatory factors, that transmit information through a hidden layer or a set of hidden layers, which represent neurons within the brain, and these in turn transmit information to the outcome or the dependent variable. So each variable in the statistical model represents a neuron and each upstream neuron, for example, IQ or conscientiousness or work experience, feeds information into neurons in one or more hidden layers, which in turn feed information into the outcome that we're actually trying to predict in this case, performance of the potential job applicant. This is what such an artificial neural network might look like. So here you have a very simple uh, artificial neural network called a multi-layer perceptron. There are four input variables on the left. So on the top, there's an error term, which you don't need to worry about because it's basically all of the other variables not included in your model. Uh, you also have IQ, conscientiousness, and work experience, right? So these input variables are connected to two nodes that are located in the hidden layer. And these two nodes are in turn connected to the key output variable, in this case, job performance. Each line connecting the nodes contains a weight, uh, which is essentially a single number that expresses the strength of the relationship between the nodes. All right. So these weights are optimized as the model learns in the training phase. I still don't get it. Well, don't worry about it. Let me uh, try and explain a little bit more clearly. So what happens is this, let's say you have information on 400 current employees. You know their IQ scores, you know their conscientiousness scores and the years of work experience, right? So these would be your independent variables that you'll use to predict. And you also know their performance appraisal scores, which is the key outcome. So a performance appraisal score might be on a scale of one to seven, where one is the lowest performer and seven is the highest performer. So what you want to know is whether each of the three factors predicts job performance as measured by the appraisal scores. Your artificial neural network 
we'll break the 400 employees into two groups, right? So the training sample, this is where the neural network iteratively learns, and the testing sample. And this is where you test out your optimized network to see if it actually works. That is to say, does it actually predict job performance? So let's assume that you've built your neural network, trained it on say 300 of those 400 employees, and then tested it on the remaining 100 employees. The results demonstrate good predictive power. Now, with that trained artificial neural network, you can now add in IQ scores, conscientiousness scores, and work experience of, let's say, 20 or so job applicants applying for a single position within your company. When you pump those data through the trained neural network, it should be able to tell you which of those 20 applicants is most likely to be a high performer, right? So you can use these predictions to then make a decision on whom to hire. Don't worry too much if you're still not entirely clear on artificial neural networks. I'll show you how to build one later. Wow, that is cool. I can see how machine learning could be useful to HR managers. Yeah, absolutely cool. And I think the coolest thing about neural networks is that they can be used on huge amounts of data, right? So if you had a company with say 100,000 employees and you kept regular data about them, you could create even more powerful models with even better predictive power than any individual human brain could ever attain. Let's now have a word with a leading HR expert and see how machine learning could be beneficial. Have a listen to the podcast in the next lesson. This is Professor Andrew R. Timming, signing out.